the 80 millimeter macro lens from Fuji. Let's talk about it, guys. What's up, guys? It's uh, Tung. I'm back again with another lens review, and this time it's with this baby so please enjoy the photos that i took i'm going to be sharing it throughout this whole video while i'll give you my opinions about this lens the 80 millimeter f28 macro this thing is a beast and let me just say that i've never had so much fun shooting with a lens than i do with this one right here from fujifilm oh man the shots i was getting the insane details looking at these files was a joy my eyes widen uh, my mind was just blown and i was just flabbergasted at everything that i captured like the other gear reviews i've done it's going to be more about my experiences and how i use the lens and not so much about reading the spec sheets and the sharpness test because let's face it if you are going to buy this lens for about almost 1600 canadian you want to be using this out in the real world and putting it through its paces. Real. Real. Is that a lisp too? Real. Is it real? It's real. 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 Ah, oh, man. I'm such a fob. Let's talk about the first thing you're, you are going to notice right off the bat is the size of this thing. This thing is huge. It weighs more than one and a half pounds. Here it is besides uh, the 35mm f2 and the 14mm millimeter f2.8 for scale. It has so much glass as you can see. It has weather re resistance which is clutch. Who doesn't love their gear to be uh, weather resistant? Am I right? You're going to notice when you shoot with this lens that it's going to weigh you down because of its size and weight. When I try to shoot macro stuff by the end of it my forearms would be a little fatigue just because of the amount of weight there is and uh, trying to get real close to the subject uh, to get those detail shots you are going to have to keep a steady hand this lens has ois optical image stabilization which is great because it's such a long focal length that the shakes are more visible and i notice when i turn on the ois it smooths out the handling it is less jittery and I can focus on my composition a lot better with it on. Without it on, it just looks like you just took four shots of espresso and your hands are just shaking all over the place. It's not, it's not good, it's not fun. There's also this focus range limiter. If you want to get detailed uh, close-up macro shots, you want to set this to 0.25 centimeters to uh, 0.5 centimeter because it tells the lens where to focus since this is such a huge glass, it's a lot quicker this way and you once you want to get a little wider you can set it to 0.5 to infinity there's also one more setting which is the full setting and if you don't want to think about it the think about the difference in distancing how close or how far you are just leave it on the full setting and it'll take care of it for you but um fair warning that this is a lot slower to autofocus this way since you're telling the lens to cover the whole range and um, yeah, I never use this setting because it's so slow to just focus. Speaking of autofocusing, a lot of people online say this is one of Fujifilm's fastest focusing lens and I have to disagree. It focuses fine once you set the range on it, but I feel it's not one of the fastest, but it's a lot better than the 56 F12 and the older lenses. But sometimes it just hunts and I think it could be user error, but I get more hunting with this lens than the other lenses that I've used. And again, I think it's just because this has so much glass, it's quite long inside. So the motors inside are working harder to grab focus than the smaller Fuji lenses. Let's get on with the image quality from this lens. Priced at 1600 Canadian, you're getting Fuji's sharpest lens. It's incredible. It's insanely impressively sharp. While I was playing around with the files, sometimes I thought I was just playing with my GFX RAW files. That's how sharp it is, which is freaking amazing. I've never had more fun looking at details than I do with this lens. I'm just so amazed by this lens. I'm not a macro shooter, but with this lens, I felt like such a pro at it. I would go into the backyard or some bushes near my gym and I just started 
to snap away. That's what I like about this lens. It makes me want to get out and capture life, capture another world. Um, once you get into a macro, it feels otherworldly. My god, everything I saw, I honestly thought I was looking into a microscope. The details I would see, man, it changes your entire perspective and how you view photography with just this lens alone. I was taking some shots in the backyard and I saw some flies just hanging around, some rotten apples. So I decided to take some photos with them in it. And you know how flies are pests in our world? They're just super annoying. Uh, whenever you see them buzzing around, you just want to kill them. You just try to find a newspaper, roll it up, or a fly swatter and you try to like kill it, squish it. But once you put on this macro lens, you're entering their world. You get to see how they live. And I just thought that was pretty epic. I felt like a Nat Geo photographer documenting wild animals. Mm. You see them up close and personal, you see the details in their wings, and you can see their strands of hair just growing out of their body. And you think, man, there's a whole other universe we can't see. These bugs, they, ha they have lives, they are living, they must hunt and feed to survive. And I just love seeing that story unfold when you're taking macro. It's legit a different world. It, it's otherworldly in my books. I just felt like Ant-Man shrinking down and seeing all these really small insects become so larger than life. It's quite impressive to see them blown up on my laptop screen. It's, it's very magical. A tip for you guys when using this lens though, when, you, when using this lens, you're going to realize that shooting wide open macro at f2.8 is going to be too shallow. You need to stop this lens down to anywhere from f11 to f16 to get everything in focus. Otherwise, the depth of field is so razor thin, you're gonna miss focus at f28. But other than macro, I also think that this is quite uh, versatile as a mid telephoto lens. At 80 millimeters, you're looking at a 120 millimeter full frame equivalent, and that makes it quite nice for portraits. During my use with it, I find it uh, very sharp, very detailed, and it was quite pleasant to use. I can say that this is by far the sharpest lens I ever tried. If you feel that this lens is too sharp for portraits, you can always unsharpen the image or you can soften out the portrait. There, there are ways around it. I also used uh, this lens for other styles for, of photography, such as landscapes and taking pictures of the, the highway and the cars when I was walking around Mississauga. And yeah, I took, I took a shot. I took some shots of the infamous Highway 400s here in uh, Toronto. This shot was at the 401 West and yeah, I hate this highway so much. There's so many dumb drivers and there's always an accident like every day on this highway. But anyways, I digress. I used it because I needed that extra reach and I really like that I can use it in this type of situation, this lens is very versatile. Let's go over some negatives. As I mentioned, this is a bigger lens and it weighs 1.5 pounds. I find when shooting macros, it may be hard to keep still even with the image stabilization on. This lens hunts a lot, especially when shooting macro. It could be user error and it could be that I'm still learning how to use this lens correctly. But for me anyways, this thing hunts a lot. And sometimes when you're at a crucial moment I might add. I would want to go and focus on a bug and it would take so long that the bug would just be out of the frame by then and that just gets me so annoyed because I was really excited to photograph that ladybug. It also hunts a lot if there's no good lighting available. I noticed this when I was shooting on an overcast day. When I tried stopping it down to f16 it hunted a lot. I would have to bump up my ISO to like 6400 to get a decent shot and at 6400 ISO some of these shots are unusable for macro. It doesn't look as sharp, it doesn't look as clean and you can also miss focus because of how shallow that focal plane is. If it's windy you're going to have a hard time nailing focus even at f16. Just a slight wind blow to the branch, the leaf you're trying to capture, it's going to be out of focus. So just be careful of that. Even at f16, your macro shots aren't safe. I really love this lens. It's probably the most unique lens in the Fujifilm lineup. 
So who is this lens for? It's honestly, it's for anybody and everybody. If you have the money for it and you can justify it, just buy it. You can use this to shoot product shots, get in close and grab all that detail. I had fun using this to capture my X-T3 and its button dials. Like look how huge this look. And just look at that aperture ring. Like my mind is blown. Like it's so cool, it's so awesome. I'm freaking enjoying myself with this lens. Wedding photographers come to mind again while using, t using it to capture details such as the wedding rings and also using it for portraits when you don't want to be so close to the subject. This has enough reach for you to take a step back. The mid telephoto range could be used for landscapes, cityscapes, whatever scapes you can think of. Again, this lens is so versatile. All right, that's it for me, guys. Don't forget, if you like this content, this video, uh, leave me a like and a comment down below and hit that subscribe button. Once again, hope you guys enjoy this review. And if you're planning to get this lens, hope you guys enjoy this lens. And for the people who have used this lens or have this lens, please let me know your thoughts uh, below. I would love to hear them out. And yeah, hope you guys stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. I love you. Ooh.